Oi, oi. We've got a very special show for you this evening. We've got a very special guest as well. We've got Gavin Lynch from GavinLynchRacing.com. Is that the actual website or is it GavinLynch.com, Gavin? Uh, GavinLynchRacing.com. I think there's a fellow who does a bit of painting that uh, he had that website before me. So I definitely can't paint anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Super. But you can pick winners and you've got an absolute an outstanding eye for spotting a horse, seeing some potential. So that's what we're going to take advantage of today. We're going to talk with Jamie, who's back as usual. Talk about some of the racing for this weekend. We've got some decent stuff at Punchestown. We've had some good action that's come up as well. We've got fairy hours coming up soon. So we're going to cover as much as we can. And then I'm obviously going to shoehorn in some sort of view towards Cheltenham. So we've done the nice tease before we started recording, Gavin. I say we get straight in. There's some good action coming up. I want to cover the big grade ones and the graded races that are going to come at fairy hours. But before that, you have mentioned yourself. There's a few good notable names that are coming up in the next few days. So... Who are you excited about this weekend? And have you got half an eye on Cheltenham for any of them? Yeah, well, even even before the weekend, uh, Thurlis and Thursday, a classical dream. So it'll be interesting to see who he gets on. He was due to go chasing a few years back, and then at the last moment, they changed their mind. And also on Friday in Fairy House, you have uh, better days ahead, thankfully, in a race that I'm sponsoring. So hopefully I'll get to shake Gordon's hand. And uh, in the following race, you've got Mr. Policeman, who is currently roughly third fourth favorite for the Arkell. There's a lot of a chat about him over the last couple of months. So so even before the weekend gets going, there's a few bits to think about. And your thoughts then. So while we're talking about Mr. Policeman, obviously there's Marine, Fasal Vega are the two predominant ones. Which of those two do you prefer after seeing Fasal's debut? And then thoughts on Mr. Policeman while we've got you here, because I think he looks tiny, like a small framed horse, and I'm worried about him jumping a fence. They seem, the vibes and Willie seem very, very positive over the last while, stable tours, etc. He was decent in Cork. He didn't beat a great field, but he done it well. I think they were expecting him to win even easier. Uh, Fasal Vega at the weekend, I was kind of given maybe an 8 out of 10. Uh, I've watched the race three times, and each time I watched it, his jumping is getting a little bit better. He was very ordinary at the first. He um, bunny hopped it, but after that, he was quite decent. In the pocket, who uh, got a nice ride to finish second, was never wasn't given a hard race, etc. So I thought that ran a cracker. Um, if you were in Marine Nationals uh, connections like Barry, I don't think he'll be uh, losing too much sleep. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on at Christmas. But yeah, the article is starting to hot up and Mr. Policeman on Friday will certainly add to it. Hopefully he will. He's up against two other Willie Mullins runners as well. They've got another reeky horse in the movement there. And I think it's Deploy the Getaway or Classic Getaway. One of the ones I forget. Been off for a long time. But he should be beating those, even if he's not that good over fences. Right, let's look at the weekend action then, the big stuff, that's all right. Bet Fair Chase and 1965 Chase are the best two races in Britain over the weekend. I know that's up for discussion. The news this week that Daryl Jacobs is going to take the ride on Brave Man's game because he's going there because apparently he's working so well. Nothing to do with the fact that Shishkin's been confirmed to go to Ascot, I wouldn't imagine. But it looks like it'll be Brave Man's game versus Protectorat. Dan Skelton said he's worried about some of his horses first time out, but he says that Protectorat will be sorted. And then obviously Shishkin's probably only going to have to really face Pick Dory at Ascot. Obviously in isolation, I reckon those races are fairly obvious, although the Betfair Chase, maybe we might have different opinions on there. So you two, right? We'll start again with you, um, Gavin. What do, what do you think of those two races? Probably don't take too long on them. But then also I'm keen to know what your thoughts are on the King George for both of these horses, because that's where they're going to be heading next, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't say Harry is too happy, to be honest. Uh, I read a quote yesterday where he said he was disappointed uh, it seems to me like Paul is keeping one or two owners happy by sending him to Ascot. Um, yeah, like to miss out on the first grade one in the UK seems crazy to me, but uh, there you go. Um, Brave Man's game, he's only had three weeks since Weatherby. He's obviously the best horse in the race. He's rated 172, Protector at 166, won the race last year. But when you look at the race last year, he beats Eldorado Allen and Frodon. So like at, at best, that was a grade two last year, really. Um, I'd be definitely in favour of of Brave Man's game. I looked at the forecast there with YR.no and it's showing very little rain between now and um and Saturday. So for me, I think I'm surprised it's not a little bit shorter. He's five to four at the moment. A protector at is eleven to eight. I would have thought the Brave Man's game would be evens or four to five personally. Um having two runs before the King George, you mentioned the race. I'm very surprised he's going to have two runs before the King George because that would you know imagine that would his be his ultimate aim for the season. Um Totally right that he's what is he seven to four to win the King George? It'd be very very difficult to beat. It's his ideal conditions: a flat track, three miles, a uh, jumping track. He's a brilliant jumper. 
Um, yeah, I thought he'd be short at the weekend. What did you think? See, I'm still really confused because it's sort of come out of nowhere, isn't it? I'm reading into it more about the fact that Shiskin's gone to Ascot and maybe because there's only Protector about to take on, Dan's horses aren't running so well. So maybe he's just thinking, although the King George is an opportunity, I can pick up another grade one here. It's some more prize money for the trainer's title and he's got the horse to do it. So it's a weird one, isn't it? I'm keen like I'm, I'm keen just to see how it goes because he should win. That's the feel and end of it. He should have won the Charlie Hall. People were saying, oh, it's fine. He made the mistake at the last. It's allowed to do that. It's a prep run for the King George. You'll be sound for it. He's obviously running here for a reason, isn't he? Shishkin in the 1965 will be interesting because I am i can't wait to see him go back up and trip at three miles. Jamie, you like Shishkin. You quite liked him for the King George, didn't you? Are you more excited now that Brave Man's Games having another prep run before it? I am not too dis- concerned, lads, about him having a second run. Shouldn't caught us Tarvin and an old run, then a bet fair chase, then a King George. So, you know, I think he's going up there to pick up a soft grade one. Well, I agree there with you all saying that... Um, it's baffling why Harry Cobden's not going up there. Or did they blame him? Did they blame him for the Charlie Hall? Should he have won the Charlie Hall? I think he was holding on to nothing myself. But it was a prep run for either the Betfair or the King George. But I wouldn't take any notes of this. I think, what is it, Kevin said, fight for it. Yeah, it's a great price. He should be odds on. And he'll be protector at it. It was a weak race last year. And I always think protector at doesn't really stay to the three, mile, three miles plus. So he got away with it last year because it wasn't a great race. But... Uh, Getting on to Shishkin, yeah, he only has to beat Pictori. It wouldn't bother me in the slices if Pictori beat him on Saturday. But, uh, yeah, I really fancy Shishkin unbeaten at Kempton. Uh, I think he's better going right-handed, and that's my opinion. And I'd be backing him against Brave Man game all day long. Nice. So we are obviously shoehorning in the King George there, Gavin. What's your thoughts on it? Like, I, I don't suppose Adaho will come over, but Shishkin versus Brave Man's Game, which camp were you in before the fact that Brave Man's Game was running? And now that he's running at Haydock, does it, would it make you change your mind? I don't think so. I'd be going for Brave Man's Game. I think Shishkin, for a horse, the one is supreme and an article. Uh, he seems now that he's not traveling in his races. He looked beat all ends up at Ascot. Uh, the one thing, two things you have to do in Kempton one is jump, uh, but secondly, you have to travel really well. So I think it'll really suit Brave Man's game. I was giving Shishkin a chance in it, thinking back, but no, I'd be Brave Man's game simply because of the way he travels. I wouldn't bra- blame Harry Cobden for the last day in, in Weatherby. I don't think he did a lot wrong. I think he was nudging after two out. The horse just made a mistake. I don't think he would have won anyway, even if he did wing the last, to be honest. He just got tired. The ground was soft. Um, so I expect Brave Man's game to win this weekend, and I think he just travels better than Shishkin for King George, even though... Shishkin would be better going right-handed, yeah. Nice. So maybe some people out there might want to get on the old related double. In, I'm sure some bookies will be pricing that up. Um, in Punch's Town, we've got the Florida Pearl Novices Chase and we've got the Morgiana. Now, the Florida Pearl will always be a race that people will say, you don't get too many like brown advisory winners out of it. But this year's renewal looks, I would say, a little bit better. Hopefully, Florin Porter's going to run. I've just put him up for the uh, brown advisory. Fairly price-driven, but I, I like the, what Broadway Boy did recently at Cheltenham. I think Frank's the form for him. I get the age thing, get all that stuff, but I'm hoping, well, I need Floor Porter to dot up in the more in the Florida Pell, and then the Morgiana. I'm guessing it's just going to be State Man that wins those. So, Gavin, early thoughts on those two races? I would be shocked if Floor Porter ran this weekend simply because it's right-handed. Um, I'd imagine he'll go left-handed next, maybe Leprechaun of Christmas. Uh, I thought maybe <clears throat> Upperdale Fury was very good in Galway. The time was good. Uh, he beat Fabry de Champdou. He's down at the line to win by maybe a length and a half. can't remember, but it could have been a little bit more. He made one mistake early on, but overall his jumping was good. He's getting five pounds from Churchstone Warrior, who is a novice on for the next couple of weeks, and then he's not a novice. Um, so maybe in all needs, Upperdale Fury must have a good chance, yeah. Nice. Jamie, your thoughts on the Florida Bell? Uh, I'm... I've... Was in agreement with Kevin for a few minutes, but then I saw Sandra Claygon is running. So I I think Sandra Claygon is another horse that is uh, better going right handed. And I think he was in a decent race last day with Imagine. Uh, I know the way you're thinking in Pinkerton, wasn't it? Uh, step up and trip. That was two miles, up to two miles six. And the further he goes, the better he is. And I think he's better going right handed. So if he runs, I'll back Sandra Claygon. Yeah. Nice. Well, we haven't got final declarations. We are recording this on Wednesday, but there's a few good names. It looks like it could be. Quite a good race. But like I say, historically, there has been just some sort of dismal and less competitive renewals. For um, <clears throat> for the Morgiana then, Gavin, State Man's just going to have no one to beat, do we think? No. Uh, you can do the... If you could get odds on the, the forecast of the first four home now, you'd probably take it. State Man first, uh, second Pied Piper, third Echoes and Rain, and fourth Astro Diamond. 
But um, and there might only be four or five in it. I can't imagine that Irish point or Imperial Pass will run. Imperial Pass will go for Hatton's Grace, as Willie has said. Now that's provided nothing happens today or tomorrow in the next couple of days. But um, you'd imagine the statement. I see his threes on. I'd say he'll go off short on that on Sunday. I'd say he'd be fives on on Sunday. And do you think he's got any chance of getting to Constitution Hill in March? No. Uh, they will change the tactics. They'll probably go and make the running in March. Uh, they decided there six or eight months ago to sit him behind, which didn't work. And they'll change it up the next time. Uh, you have to do something different. There's no point otherwise. But uh, you'd imagine that Imperial Pass might give him a better race, but I can't see a statement beating Constitution Hill. No, definitely not. Jamie, I'm guessing you're of a similar resolution. We can move on. Move on, yeah. That'll be the statement. He's just go out in front and that'll get near him. Happy days. Right, the Craddock's Town Novices Chase. I think this looks like abysmal renewal. Jamie's touched on a horse that's in there. Imagine who did like take a step forward to win. I don't think he was, I mean, he was well backed, but with the way the market priced up before, I don't think he was really respected off the back that he was a well touted horse and Gordon was probably always going to make him a better chaser. I, I don't think we're going to see an Arkle winner in this particular race. Looks like a nice enough race, but maybe they could be pointless for something else. But we have got the John Durkin where hopefully we're going to see Gallop into Champ absolutely annihilate fast or slow because that race at Punchestown is not true. It's fictitious form. At least I hope it is come Sunday and we find it out. So, Gavin, I guess the Craddock's Town, we can touch on that if you want, but the John Durkin, I'm really keen to know, you don't believe that Punchestown form, surely, do you? Or do you? We go to the, <laughs> we'll go to the Craddock's Town first. Uh, you'd imagine that, imagine, uh, might make all, as you said, it's a very, very weak renewal. Lucid Dream's not a bad horse. Um, an epic song will have a run around. So, yeah, um, imagine should win. Uh, on to the John Durkin. Uh, fast or slower on a cracker in this race last year, actually. Uh, he was probably beaten 15 lengths, but he was an eye catcher. Uh, he jumped beautifully. Um, I wouldn't be as quick to dismiss fast or slow. Now, this weekend, he, he won't win. Um, two and a half miles won't be his cup of tea. Um, I could see Blue Lord maybe finish in second. He's got an excellent record first time out. Uh, he's a decent animal. But Martin Brazel is a brilliant trainer. He's very patient. I'd imagine he'll only be thinking of March. Um, Gallop and Deschamps will win. But if, if fast or slow was beaten 6, 8, 10 lengths, I'd say they'd be very happy with that. And I wouldn't just totally dismiss him for Cheltenham. I think he's only seven. He's the same as Gallop and Deschamps. They're both the perfect age. He's only had maybe five runs over fences. He won over fences as a three-year-old in France. Uh, I just wouldn't dismiss him at 14 to 1. Uh, you have to be looking for younger horses like Brave Man's Game won't win a Gold Cup, Shishkin won't win a Gold Cup. At least um, with Fast or Slow, you have the potential that he could uh, get to their level. Like It was a brilliant run in, in Punchdown. Fair enough, it's the end of the season, so people can quickly dismiss it. Um, as I said, I can't see him win this weekend, but I just think he's definitely got an each way shout in March. Oh, I like that, because like I say, I'm very much of the opinion that he's going to be just almost shown up in this race. So if he does get within the few lengths that you said that Martin Brazil and Connects would be happy with, I will probably upgrade his performance. I'm not expecting him to get anywhere close to a gallop in the shop, but I think, like, brutally being honest, no one really is, even though he is in the Gold Cup pitch ready for a conversation. Jamie, well, I mean, the credits time, we've, I think we've already covered that. John Dirk and yeah. gallop in the shop, fast or slow, give me the thoughts. I imagine we'll win, yeah, easy, start to finish. Uh, yeah, I agree with Kevin. I think he's been dismissed for the Gold Cup big time. Uh, you need a younger horse, uh, and Martin Brazel always gears his horse up to, towards March, and the better the ground, the better he sends. So I wouldn't dismiss him. I think mean, he's a bet at each rate, 14 to 1, big time, because there, there'll be a lot of dead wood behind um, Gallop in the Champ and Jerry Clam. So I think he, he's a definite show to be in the first three anyway, in the Gold Cup. Yeah, I wouldn't dismiss him. People are dismissing too early, Dave. Uh, and there, I, I know Punchstown, there's a lot of cribbing with the farm and it's at the end of the season uh, malarkey, but uh, no, I um, wouldn't dismiss him at all. And, but I suppose you want him to see him to win a race at three miles first before uh, going on to win a Gold Cup. Yeah, fair enough. So, I mean, I guess, I guess it's varying opinions, but I think we're all of the same opinion that Gallup and the Trump's going to sluice up on Sunday, but that doesn't mean that that's a bad run from fast or slow. Right, Royal Bond, Hatton's Grace, Drimmore. While we've got you, Gavin, I have to get your thoughts on these because these are some filthy looking entries. There could be some proper clashes going on. I know the order would be Raw Bond, Hatton's Grace, Drimmore. So we can go in that order if that's the way you want to do it. My main race I want to know your thoughts on is the Hatton's Grace though. So let's go, let's do okay. it in the order. If you want to say what you want to say, but Hatton's Grace, I need to ask you about Tia Fu and Imbere Bars. And uh, also just to mention this weekend, Willie is starting to produce some of the younger big guns. We'll call them Gaelic Warrior over fences, Tully Hill, Enola, Ballyburn, 
Um, so that's exciting. Uh, those aren't really entered in the Royal Bond. There's 27 at the minute. Just to give you three off the top of the list might be uh, down memory lane, one of poor race, very impressed to be at down royal. Uh, you also have Farron Glory, who's very impressive in uh, Clonmel, and Slade Steel, who won last Sunday at um, Nace in a very decent time. So they would be three towards the top of the list, I'd imagine. I do like Slade Steel. I shoved him down as um horse to follow this season because I think Connections mentioned that they actually thought he would beat Ballyburn at Punchestown and they weren't disappointed with the run. So that's maybe a good boost for Ballyburn. And he's due to run this weekend as well as the Nice. While we've quickly mentioned him, Supreme or Ballymore? Ballyburn, um, he's down to run in Cork over two miles. In my experience over the years, once Willie starts a horse at a certain trip and they keep winning, he tends to leave them at that trip. Not always uh, when you look at Sir Gerhard winning at Ballymore, etc. But just usually, you can only, it's like anything in life, 80-20. Um, but I think Ballyburn will end up in the Supreme at the moment. That'll be my guess. Same. And my interesting thought with this is he's 6-1 to one for a Ballymore. He's 12s for a Supreme, which is mad when you think there was all these 12-1 to one shots of Rich Riga horses that never even made the race course. And we know how good this horse is. Anyway, just thought I'd drop that one in there. Jamie, anything for the Raw Bond? I agree with one with Gavin. Yeah, down memory lane. Uh, it looks a speedball to me. Um, I see what the Gordon Ellis said they will kind of like mind, her, mind him this year. But um, I'd be worried about him in the Supreme. I think he'd be better off in the Ballymore because all his speeders normally go to the Ballymore. The one horse that I kind of liked and he looked good in the eye was Gavin Cromwell's Redstone. You won there at Ferry House. He travelled like a very, very good horse. And uh, he'd be my other one against the field. Yeah. So it'd be down memory lane and Redstone would be the two I have against in my head for the Royal Bond at the moment. Fair enough. Right. I don't know how many minutes we're in, about 15 minutes in, but this was the question I wanted to ask you the whole time, Gavin. The Hatton's Grace, right? I I, I really fancy Tiapu for the stayers. I understand that he maybe should have won it last year. I understand that he might want a little bit slow. In this particular race, though, the Hatton's Grace, going up against... The monster, well, he looked like a monster in Pere Pass, like we've touched on with fast or slow, potentially getting beaten. I would expect that in Pere Pass could beat Tiapu, especially considering like weather forecasts and like there's bundles of rain around. I think he could beat him in the Hatton's Grace. Imagine Tiapu beats in Pere Pass in there. So I wanted to know your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, like, d- d- what would what would your expectation be pre race for the result of the Hatton's Grace? And I know there's other horses that could run in there, but my main two would be in Pere Pass, Tiapu. I know the two of them stand out. They're both rated 160, which is very interesting. Um, obviously, the softer ground, the better the chance for Tiupu. He's a mudlark. Uh, he won the race last year, which was a very exciting race. Um, yeah, if the ground came up good to yielding, you'd fancy Imperial Pass. Um, the other thing at the moment is you're just not fully sure how fit every horse Willie has that's running at the moment. So it's okay to win maiden hurdles 90% fit. That's, that's easy peasy. But to take on Tiupu, who's going to be gun fit, Gordons are flying. He's 11 winners, as we know, in uh, Down Royal. So Imperial Pass would want to be very close to fitness to beat Tiupu. Uh, I fancy Imperial Pass. I won't back it at odds on just because of the fitness concerns. And uh, if the ground was really soft, well, then your the love of your life, Tiupu, would have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that's superb because I wouldn't again I wouldn't mind if he gets beat in that race because for me this season's all about Cheltenham for him I still think six to one's a monster price but that's a that's a discussion for a later date or another time Jamie Hatton's Grace Dane Fords, it, right yeah yeah if it's very heavy if it's heavy two people will win uh, but down the line obviously the Imperial Pass is a better horse and uh, it all depends on the rain Dave if there's a rain two people win if there's no rain Imperial Pass will win yeah, see, that's what I'm half hoping. I'll get quite price-driven in the race, I reckon, because, like you're saying, Willie's might not be fully tuned up. Gordon's definitely will be. And if they started to make either of them too big a price, you could back either, I reckon, in that race. Looks a fantastic rate, uh, renewal. Um, the Drinmore, Gavin, thoughts in there? The novice chases this season, like the Irish side of it look always like they've got miles more than we have. But I think the British, or at least with Iroka, unfortunately, losing, we had a good few ones. Drinmore this year, do you think it looks like a good renewal? Yeah, last year's was a brilliant re- renewal, just to say. Uh, American Mike is entered, but I can't see him running because there'd only, be, only be two weeks between Nav and Imperial, so that'd be too short. He'll go to Limerick at Christmas because he loves soft ground. Uh, three to mention, found a 50, Sharjah, and let's be clear about it. Uh, Sharjah is he 10 turning 11, but still fantastic in his two performances at uh, Galway and Tipperary. And let's be clear about it. Okay, the form was let down by Mighty Tom at Cheltenham, but uh, to me, let's be clear about it was fantastic. His jumping was brilliant in, um, in Cork. So probably between maybe those two, found a 50 might try and make the running. 
Uh, and for me, maybe let's be clear about it. I think it'll be an informative race because obviously charge has been jumping markedly right, which I didn't really notice him as a hurdler and then found a 50 in his um, beginner's chase that he won. They doled off loads of fences. I know we get a load of crap for it at Aintree where they do it all the time, but there was like, a, I think it was 90 seconds from the last time that he jumped a fence till he got to the line. Not to necessarily crab him, but I think we'll find out a lot more about those two where they're going to stand in terms of like top grade performers. You could potentially see one of them dotting up, I reckon. Jamie, do you see it between those two or few or any more? Yeah, Gavin just mentioned all three, really. Um, the only other one I suppose was in my head for it was but it jumped a little bit to the right, wasn't it, against uh, Cool Survivor? Every quick silly ass, it could be a huge price each way. But I'm totally agreeing with Kevin. I think this let's be clear about was very good at Cork. And a friend of mine was at it and ran straight to the line and wasn't being pulled up. It got pulled up by the fence around the corner at the side of Cork Racetrack. And uh, he said to me, that'll win the Drimmer. So he's a good judge. Gavin's a good judge. We're all a good judge. And I'd be on, let's be clear about it for the Drimmer all day. Yeah. I mean, that's bold talk. I had a reasonable bet on him when he had his chase debut just because of the figures. I didn't trust the form and I couldn't believe the price of him. I'll be honest. I sort of thought that's that's it. That's the time to get some money out of him. But people are talking about him like he could be top tier. I like it. He's definitely a good horse. Right. Anything else from the racing that's coming up in the short time we want to talk about? Or can I pinch you, Gavin, for a few more Cheltenham-focused questions? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yes, we'll do it for the people. Right. <laughs> we, we've, I've touched on, we've already done the uh, sort of Marine National, Fasal Vega uh, sort of camp type stuff. We've touched on Ballyburn, whether we'll go Supreme or Ballymore. I need to ask you a couple of questions about some other ones that are out this weekend. And then I think Jamie's got a couple of horses as well he'd like to pick your brains on. So Gaelic Warrior, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's obviously he's obviously been a, a talking horse for many a season. The Fred Winter mark, whichever way it gets proved, he got beat. So the people that didn't back him were right. The people that backed him were right because he traded fours on. He was definitely the wrong weight then. But he didn't get his head in front. Bumps into a potential monster in Pere Pass. In between, that's been doing loads of business at two miles and showing like plenty of speed. He does hang a little bit right. He does jump a little bit right. Maybe the the sort of jumping over fence will straighten him out. Like what? Like what are your thoughts on the fact that obviously he's going chasing? What? Like the fact that they're talking about maybe Brown advisory for him because I I would think if he's going to hang or jump right, you wouldn't want to be doing that for longer than you need to. So I guess just the whole piece of the pie on Gaelic Warrior. Do you reckon he's going to be a flop this year, or do you reckon he's going to be straight to the top? Well, like he's going right-handed on Sunday. If he runs uh, over two miles, three and a half a furlong, I could see him being very impressive. He's got a brilliant engine. Uh, it was a very good value more. He came back to uh, Punchestown. I was there that day. He got badly checked as they turned in and you thought, oh, he, Paul could be in a spot of bother and he just got a gap and he just whizzed through it. So he definitely stays three miles. He's got a big, big engine, as, as you said. He won a, a very good handicap over two miles at Leopardstown. So he definitely has the engine. The problem you have is going left-handed. Um, he was favoured for the stairs hurdle and there was talk of that. Uh, one thing to note, in the stairs hurdle, there's 12 flights. In the Turners, there's 17, and the RSA or the Brown Advisory, there's 19. So the other thing is that the, the Brown Advisory is run on the old course on the Wednesday, and it's quite a tight track, so it can just be down to his jumping. If it was right-handed um, in, a, in a Turners or an RSA, he'd be a lot shorter. So I'd imagine he'd be very impressive at the weekend. I hope he is, and uh, he's got the engine, but we'll have to watch him first time going left-handed. Yep, and my worry is like hopefully they do it at the Dublin Racer Festival. We might not find out. Willie can be smart sometimes, can't he? And just save it for the big occasion, and then he proves that he's the master, and we've doubted him for no reason. But I'm keen to see him go. I think he's good. I've just always got this little nagging doubt in the back of my head now that he didn't win the Buddha's off a of one two seven. So it just it, I, whenever I think of all the greats, <laughs> I just think if you've got an engine, he should have won that. But that's enough of him. Um, Anola, best, Willie Mullins' best novice, right? We saw Dysart Enos on this side of the sea that ran. Um, for Fergal O'Brien Mayor, everyone's getting a bit excited about her. She's seven to one, I think, favorite for the or just behind Brightest Days Ahead for the Mayor's Novice. Seems mad, right? Willie Mullins used to just mop this up with all the shorties. Anola looked like from flat form, it's difficult because it is flat French form, but looks all right. Would you say that she would be one of the best Willie Mullins novice mayors, or do you think there's some other names we should be paying attention to? Uh, she certainly has the potential to be. I think she ran eight times in the flat in France. Um, she was unlucky second last time out in a listed race and then went on to win a listed race over 10 furlongs. Stayed on very, very strongly. So I'd imagine two miles shouldn't be an issue. Uh, she's a four year old. She'll end up probably in the mayor's novice. She's owned by the right man and she's also trained by the right man. So 
as what is she 12s or 14s for the, the mayor's novice um will you have plenty coming out plenty of bumper winners etc um brighter days ahead that's five to one favorite she sets a very very good standard already her time in down royal was quicker than irish point her jumping could be a little bit better but she's she's very good so and Ola would want to impress. I'm sure she'll be odds on at the weekend, and she should win. Beautiful. Well, I just thought, again, like we talk about Ballyburn, 12 for a Supreme, Anola in the Mayor's Novice about 12s, 14s. I'm going to have to have like a little cheeky, like five or 10 or double on the two of them in case they impress. <laughs> there's a there's a bumper horse as well, which I don't know if you've heard of. Um, Sword of Guard, I think it is. It's State Man and Statuaire's half-brother um, out of the same dam. Nice type. Well, I just was curious. I've just mentioned it there. If you'd heard anything about the horse, because it would be early enough for Willie Mullins' bumper horse to be coming out if we're thinking Cheltenham, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be very, very early. Um, <clears throat> generally, it's December before you start seeing them, which is, what, another week or two away. So um, I haven't heard anything about any bumper horse that, that hasn't ran yet. So, um, But, yeah, I'm sure he'll win, probably win 15 bumpers between now and the end of January. <laughs> yep, it's mad, isn't it? I'm interested with this sort of guy because I, I, I wonder if they're going to bumper early and then he might end up as a bit of a county type or not but it's only because the breeding sort of bought me in but the donnelly's have bought him um unraced but could be a nice name in that bumper he'll be a willie money bumper or he'll be a real real short jamie before i start trying to pro like probe into some sort of like handicap plots if we can get any of them from gavin any like of the better class horses should i say you want any opinions on i mean we haven't talked about any of the british ones either is there anything over here that is worth asking gavin's opinion on if they're good enough we go back to Gavin's favorite favorite horse. I think for this one is Bob Beck. <laughs> Bob Ollinger. Jesus. Uh, look at uh, he was very good the other day. Got a fantastic ride from Rachel just to to surprise the gap before they came to the last. Um, the problem he has is he's not good enough for a top grade one at two miles or three miles. There's no such thing as a Ryanair hurdle at Cheltenham. Uh, he mightn't win that either. So he'd certainly win, you know, a grade two and a grade three. But winning at Cheltenham, I can't see it. No. The bumper race on Sunday, Gavin, I thought it was, that was one hell of a good bumper. Uh, I thought Harry Swan was probably lost the place up to halfway up the straight and he should have won with the five pound claim. But I think there are three good, good bumper horse going forward. Spring de la Mer, um, my trump card and Apples of Brazils, is it, for Barry Connell? I see Gavin Crawford yeah. with a tout, big tout about Spring de la Mer. Yeah, no, I think all three were very, very fancied. Uh, they nearly went off co-favourites in the end. And, um, yeah, um, the Garden Horse, my trump card, like he's 50 to 1 at the moment for a Bartlett. That would probably sound a little bit big, but um, I think when he gets two and a half, three miles, he's going to be excellent. Uh, bumpers over two and a half. Like he was a big guy catcher first time over hurdles um, last season over two and a half. So he wants a minimum of two and a half, but I'd say he could end up a three miler, but he should be decent, yeah. For the British, Will Mount, Johnny Who, and JPR one as a novice chaser. Where's he gonna go after what happened? Yeah, see, J- yeah JPR one got I think has gone up in the ratings to something yeah. like um from 134 11, to 125, so yeah, yeah. 11 pounds. Yeah, uh, he was going to be impressive. I can't see him winning an article. Uh, mm-hmm. could he end up maybe in the grand annual? I'm not sure, but he would have bolted up the other day, but it wasn't the strongest race, I don't think. Um Will Mount was excellent. He was very fast over the last mile from four out, three out, two out to the line. He was quick. And then I seen, um, I'm just looking down here at the name of Jericho de Repine that uh, Nicky yeah, spoke about yesterday. Him. And uh, he was he was raving about him. So <clears throat> he could have two good ones there. So will he separate them? One go two, one go two and a half. I'm not so sure. So, uh, But Will Mount was excellent, yeah. He's done it a lot with his horses in the past, hasn't he, um, uh, Nicky? He'll just run them against each other in a supreme didn't you like we did it with Bouvet there back in the day uh forget was that the year that Shishkin won it or one of those or Amy Alty or but he's happy to run them against each other isn't he which I quite like in Nicky Henderson because he's a little bit more straightforward whereas Willie knows anything of his that could win a supreme would probably win most Ballymores didn't he yeah <laughs> that's fair <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that's that's most of it covered Gavin but while I've just got you for a few more seconds right the attempts there's a attempts qualifier in Ireland on Sunday Obviously, looking at that, it gets me excited because I'm thinking, ooh, there could be some plots in here. I tend to look at the horses in there and thinking they are plotting, but they're maybe not plotting for a attempt. So it's the million-dollar question. I appreciate that you have a paid service that you don't want to give too much free information away from. But have you got any horses like that for down the line you think are being worked towards a particular race or anything that you reckon is worth us keeping an eye on for the short term? I thought I had the right horse for the attempts in Slate Lane. And I said to myself, right, he's got an English rate in 127. He's after winning two or three races there. So that's perfect. 
he'll go and win a, a qualifier, finish second in qualifier, go to maybe 134, 135, and he'll win the pretemps. But that plan has come unstuck because he's due to run in Haydock this weekend. He's got a massive chance. Um, so I'm disappointed that he's not going in a pretemps qualifier and then going straight to Cheltenham. So that's a pity. And then uh, there's a horse next week under control should win the Jerry Phelan for Nikki Henderson. Uh, the former Frank with Iberi Co Lord. I think she's got a rate now of 136 after Sandown. Um, Nick, or, uh, Nikki loves that race, has won it before with Epitant, etc. So I think under control is certainly a horse to watch this season. Awesome. Right. I feel like we I mean, I'm, I've had, now I've had enough of your time. I feel like we're fairly done with the stuff that I asked that we were going to do. Is there anything, if we could squeeze any more out of you in terms of Cheltenham Festival stuff, right, Gavin? If you had to, gun to the head, pick. I like a lucky 15 or a couple of horses or a single bet oh, geez, or anything. Lucky 15. Oh, no, oh, oh. no, that's too much. That's too much. A anything, that's um, like nothing, nothing serious. The only reason I said lucky 15 is just a non serious bet, not like you've got to try and find us good value, the right targets, anything that what you know you might be worth a little bit of a swing at for Cheltenham. I backed Dino Blue um, there a month ago uh, before she won um, in Nace. I still think she's value. I think she's nine to two about three six five. I think that's very very fair. I can't see like novices will be allowed running the race, but I can't see a novice getting up to her level of one five five. Um, so I think she's still good value at nine to two. Uh, and maybe as you said, Ballyburn at twelve to one for the Supreme is okay value because if it wins this weekend over two miles, um, you know there's a good chance Willie will go down that road. I certainly couldn't be back in Ballyburn at six to one for Ballymore. No chance, no way. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better because I have had a couple of quid on him just, so far for the Zebrin. Feel like just, it's the obligatory ones, especially appreciated one this race, I think, didn't he, in Cork before? And then obviously there was lots of talk about him potentially being like an Albert Bartlett horse. So it's mad to think that anyone's six to one for a Ballymore's mental. Jamie, any do you like I put Jamie, I put Gavin, like spot, Gavin put you on the spot as well. Give Gavin, us two more to make up like 15. Kevin might uh, be, an be annoyed now when I say this horse, but uh, I actually kind of agree with him because if you look back at the Captain Teague race uh, during the week, uh, the big die in, travelled like a really good horse and didn't get home. And um, I've backed this horse for the Albert Bartlett because I've seen his RPR and it's a high RPR, but it's a high RPR for around Limerick. It's high class hero. And uh, I think he's a good bet in the Albert Bartlett experience wise because he's run all the way during the summer. It was like the old Arbor Bartlett type. The more experience you have, the better you have in a chance. And I think he's a great bet. Uh, the other horse I suppose I asked Gevin about was, I suppose, trying fee wise. What do you think of Burdett Road the weekend? Willie, Trouble, Salvatore Mundy, Bunting, and uh, what's the other one? Majbra for a triumph hurdle. Um, yeah, Burdett Road was very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Paul Carby esque ride out the back. Yeah. Uh, when you're coming down the hill, you're kind of watching it going, oh. Have you overplayed your hand here, Harry? But he hadn't. He timed it perfect. Rate 101 in the flat. So has the gears. The one thing you'd like as well is showed a great attitude uh, coming up the hill. Uh, the trainer said he was very worried with the soft ground. He'd be much better on decent ground. Uh, the good thing for him is that unlike when I was a young lad, there won't be 30 or 40 in the triumph hurdle like there used to be. Um, so the fact there'll only be 10 or 12 in it would help him to get through the traffic. Uh, he's only got two hurdles in the last seven and a half furlongs. Um, yeah, so Burdett Road has a good chance. The time wasn't amazing, but he, he could only be what's in front of him. And Brad on Fassa and the, the horse with the French form were second and third. So I wouldn't get too carried away, but certainly it was a good performance, yeah. Awesome. Right, I feel like that's enough and a nice little point to wrap this up, Gavin. Like, I genuinely, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your... No problem, to speak to us. Really respect your opinion in the game, full stop. So all the stuff that you do free on Twitter and even your paid-for service, which we get a few snippets of, is fantastic. So everybody needs to check that out. GavinLynchRacing.com or if you need some painting done, GavinLynch.com. <laughs> <laughs>